Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm PT Stu, and I have another exciting video today. This video is a much called for video. I have many subscribers that are asking me questions that demand for this video to be made. So what's this video about? This video is about how to maximize your natural testosterone levels. A lot of guys are feeling like they have low testosterone. Maybe they don't have low testosterone. Maybe their levels are in the 400s and the low end of the range is 300 and they just don't feel good. Well, today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to maximize your natural testosterone levels before you start turning to supplements or uh, medications to help you increase your testosterone, okay? So I'm gonna go over a few things. I have my notebook with me today to keep me in line. So we're gonna start in different sections. I'm gonna read off the sections to you that we're gonna go through today. So first we're gonna talk about foods. We're gonna go over 10 foods that lower testosterone, medications, chemicals that are in your everyday products, supplements that you need to take that maybe you are lacking. Uh, we're gonna talk about sleep and we're gonna talk about body fat. And we're gonna talk about something special at the end that there's not a lot of evidence for, but I feel works. So let's dive in. So we're gonna talk about foods. And today I have with me uh, a lot written down. That way I keep it all in order for you guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and post the links to a lot of these uh, documents that I have uh, in the description. Okay, <laughs> I had to think about that. All right, so let's talk about some foods, right? Uh, you might be eating some foods that are lowering your testosterone levels and you don't even know it. Okay, so let's just jump right in. All right, let's talk about vegetable oils. Vegetable oils. So let's say you want to cook something in the pan and you don't want it to stick. Well, what do you put in? You put in canola oil. Okay, now uh, let's see. A 2019 study looked at men with hypogonadism, which means their testes don't function properly. And it found that diets in high, high in polyunsaturated fats uh, decrease serum testosterone production. Polyunsaturated fats are what we would consider vegetable oils. You know, your palm oil, your canola oil, uh, different kinds of uh, general oils that you might find. So let me just kind of give you an idea of what is a good oil to use. Um, I didn't find anything on it, whether good or bad. I didn't really actually look for this. You should look for it. Olive oil, uh, you know, extra virgin olive oil is something that I use regularly and I don't seem to have any problems with my testosterone levels. Another one that I did find that was interesting was coconut oil. Now, coconut oil contains medium chain triglycerides and medium chain triglycerides are very healthy for your body. If you don't know what they are, look them up. But when it comes to testosterone, it actually helps by preventing testosterone to be converted into dihydrotestosterone. And dihydrotestosterone is the testosterone derivative that can lead to baldness, right? So we don't wanna get rid of dihydrotestosterone because it has a lot to do with sexual functioning and uh, secondary sex characteristics. But we do maybe wanna decrease it a little bit. And by using coconut oil, you're decreasing the conversion of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone and from there subsequently you increase your testosterone okay and there's a lot of other benefits look into coconut oil look into extra virgin olive oil right now those are the ones that you really want to consider using okay next talk, we're going to talk about trans fat what is trans fat well in short whenever you eat fried foods most of the time you are eating trans fat okay what is trans fat? Trans fat is when scientists take oil and try to get it hard, okay? They try to solidify it. And when oil is getting hard, you're not, okay? So you wanna avoid trans fats. Stay away from the fast food chains that fry their foods. You, you know, Long John Silver's, hey, I know it's good. Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, I eat there, you know? So, uh, but the key here is to know that these things can affect you and minimize your intake of them, okay? If you're having these problems, you definitely need to minimize that. Sugar, sugar, sugar has a lot, of, it's got a bad rap, right? Um, 
you know, we need carbohydrates for our body to function, okay? And our bodies break down carbohydrates into glucose. Glucose is the simple sugar that our brain uses and all of our cells use. But when we talk about sugar, we're talking about sucrose, which is glucose and fructose combined. We're also talking about high fructose corn syrup. The reason that we're talking about these is because they are in almost everything in the American diet. I mean, any meal that you go out to eat, there's kind of a sweet taste. Even our toothpaste has a sweet taste. So, you know, as a society, we are addicted to sweets. But a 2018 study looked at men ages 20 to 39. It found that those who drank large amount of sugary beverage were more likely to have low testosterone levels. Okay. Um, and side note on that is uh, most of our participants also had a higher body mass, meaning fat, not necessarily muscle, okay? <sighs> baked goods. Baked goods is the next one. Now, a, 29, a 2018 study concluded that men were more likely to have low testosterone levels if they consumed high amounts of baked goods, especially bread and pastries. Now, guys, you know, part of my rationale for why that might be is when you're eating sweets, when you're eating baked goods, well, guess what you're not eating? You're not eating amino acids, okay? And amino acids are necessary for all hormones in the body because what are hormones made out of? They're made out of amino acids. So when you're decreasing the amount of amino acids that you give your body, you're decreasing the amount of hormones that you can make overall. And so I think that's a big contributor of why people get things like diabetes, high cholesterol, hypertension, et cetera, because they don't have the hormones necessary to make those things function properly, okay? And that's a theory, okay? There might be some science behind it, but that's my personal theory. Okay, let's talk about soy, right? Soy beans, uh, tofu, you know, soy sauce. Uh, soy has been found to, uh, it's a phytoestrogen, okay? And so when you, as a male, consume a phytoestrogen, it actually has an effect in the body that, uh, it says, Another study based on rats found that consuming phytoestrogens decreased testosterone levels. All right. So again, guys, you know, I eat soy sauce, but I have sushi, you know, every once in a while, right? I have a little bit of soy sauce. But for me, if it comes down to, I'm gonna choose like edamame, edamame is soy, right? So if I go out to a restaurant and they have a um, appetizer that's edamame, I stay away from it because you know, I don't want to lower my testosterone levels. And again, from time to time, maybe I'll have some, right? But I'm not going to go out and first thing every time. Okay. Uh, flaxseed. Flaxseed has been known to lower testosterone levels. Uh, there's not really much flaxseed that I hope you're not consuming too much flaxseed, right? Flaxseed has its uses mainly for fiber purposes, but uh, there's other ways to get fiber guys. And let me just segue into the next one is nuts. Okay, nuts of all kinds, so walnuts, almonds, seem to increase a production of sex hormone binding globulin. Sex hormone binding globulin, well what is that? That is a protein that floats throughout your blood that makes testosterone stick to it. And when you have higher levels of sex hormone binding globulin, then you start to decrease your testosterone levels that free, freely float throughout your body. Okay, let's see. Alcohol, alcohol is the worst. It is the worst, guys. If you like to drink, I'm sorry to say it is the worst for testosterone. Uh, a 2019 review found that men who drink alcohol heavily have lower testosterone. This might be because alcohol might affect the production of testosterone. Interestingly, an older 2002 study found that acute alcohol intoxication was associated with decreased testosterone levels in men and increased testosterone levels in women. So it's kind of the opposite here of you know what you want, right? Okay, here's something that you may not consider and you would be very surprised, and I know I was, uh, peppermint and spearmint. Okay, so we're talking gum, we're talking toothpaste, we're talking um, Listerine, okay? Let's see here.
Okay, researchers applied spearmint oil to rats with polycystic ovarian syndrome for 20 days. It lowered testosterone levels. Another study found that spearmint lowered testosterone levels in rats with PCOS. Um, another study found that peppermint tea lowered testosterone levels in rats. Okay, so these are in rats. Um, they're not in humans, so there may be some difference, but let me just say this. The reason that they test a lot of stuff on rats is because they are similar to humans in many ways. Their bodies respond like humans do in many ways, okay? Licorice, if you like licorice, well, I hope you're not eating it all the time, okay? I don't like licorice, so whatever, okay? I don't have that problem. Uh, licorice had weak anti-androgen anti properties and in general, promoted healthy hormonal functioning in people assigned female at birth and people assigned male at birth. Okay, so weak anti-androgen property. If this is anti-androgen, that just means anti-testosterone, okay? All right, moving on to medications that lower testosterone. Now, if you are taking any of these medications, it could be why you're feeling not well, okay? And you should talk to your doctor about these medications that you're taking. All right, first one is spironolactone, Spirono, spironolactone, okay? Uh, let's see, this is, it inhibits testosterone synthesis via blocking the CP450 in the Leydig cells. The Leydig cells are the cells in the testicles that make testosterone, okay? The next one is opioids. All right, guys, opioids. So. Um, I don't know how many of you out there are using opioids recreationally. I actually used to be addicted to opioids recreationally for many years. And by the grace of God, I'm no longer addicted to opioids. I've been clean uh, coming on eight years now, okay? But I can tell you this, opioids definitely had an effect on my testosterone levels. Although I didn't get them tested at the time, I, I can see just by looking back that because of the way that I was feeling, I just, you know, didn't really feel the energy, the aggression, the assertiveness, anything like that when I was using those. And, you know, there's a lot, there's this whole spiral with that, guys. So please, if you are using opioids, please see somebody and get some help, okay? And get off those things. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it, okay? All right, the next one is statins. Now, these are uh, cholesterol medications. They help to lower blood cholesterol. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that a lot of people talk about is their sexual functioning with the statins. So, um, you know, talk to your doctor about that, guys. Asthma inhalers. Now, this one makes a lot of sense because asthma inhalers, what they're doing is you're spraying that in there. You're, you're spraying a... Uh, cortisol derivative, okay? Cortisone, cortisol is an anti-inflammatory. You know, you get the cortisone shot and your knee feels better. It's temporary, it's a hormone. And cortisol decreases testosterone, okay? That's part of what happens when you take steroids is you have so much testosterone in your body that the cortisol is actually building up behind the scenes. And what does cortisol do? Well, cortisol does the opposite of testosterone. It actually breaks down your muscles, okay? For energy. So testosterone builds Cortisol, it breaks down. And when you get off the testosterone, when you get off the steroids, that flood of cortisol comes back into your body and eats up your muscles, okay? So uh, if you're using an asthma inhaler, hey, you know what, you need it, you have asthma, um, but that's just something for you guys to know that you know that is something that can affect your testosterone levels. All right, antidepressants. Antidepressants, specifically serotonin, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs. Uh, they're known to decrease testosterone levels leading to the other side effects such as low sex drive and low mood, which is kind of the opposite of what you're looking for, right? You're looking to have an antidepressant and now you have low mood. <laughs> that doesn't really make any sense. All right, uh, antihistamine. So antihistamines, you know, they're like Benadryl or, um, What's that one? Well, anyway, antihistamines is, is uh, ironic because a lot of people combine opioids with antihistamines to potentiate the effect. And antihistamines have 
an effect um, that they increase testosterone level, or I'm sorry, they increase estrogen levels and lower testosterone levels. So when estrogen levels are higher in the body, the body stops making so much testosterone because testosterone converts into estrogen. And if the body sees that estrogen is high, don't need to make no more testosterone to convert and make more estrogen, okay? All right, so we're gonna go on to chemicals, everyday chemicals that you might be in contact with and that you really need to uh, stay away from, okay? All right, so uh, this comes from Dr. Philip Failer, okay? And uh, first thing we're gonna talk about, okay, so let's see, thanks to the chemical industry, you're putting untold numbers of endocrine disrupting chemicals called xenoestrogens into your blood every day that mimic the female hormone estrogen. Here are some of the worst offenders, okay? So these are just some of them, okay? It's not all of them. All right, guys, so phthalates, it's spelled with a PH, the PH is silent, okay? Phthalates. Um, so it's often found in vinyl flooring, detergents, automotive plastics, soaps, shampoos, deodorants, perfumes, hairsprays, plastic bags, and food packaging. Guys, it's everywhere, okay? It is everywhere. And uh, I'm gonna show you some stuff that I use to that don't have that in it, okay? I mean, it might still have a little bit in it, but it's reduced, okay? But I'm gonna show you that. Um, metalloestrogens, okay? Uh, metalloestrogens, oh, by the way, let me go back to phthalates real quick. Uh, bisphenol A is also considered a phthalate, and when you have a uh, water bottle, like uh, Aquafina or something like that, and that water bottle gets hot, the bisphenol A secretes into the water and then you drink it, well, it can lower your testosterone levels and it also has been linked to cancer. Okay, so yeah, you get a, a stainless steel water bottle, refill it, boom, there you go, okay? Um, wow, guys, there's a lot here. Uh, let's see, uh, heavy metals, you know, aluminum, copper, lead, mercury, barium, cadmium, tin, cobalt, and all of these others are actually added to vaccines. They're called adjuvants. And what they're supposed to do is increase the immune response. So when you're injecting these things into your body, well, they stay in your body, right? But how do we get them out? Well, there is a potential way to get out heavy metals from your body. I can't say that it works 100%. There are, um, there are sources out there that say that it does work and there is um, actually a medical use for it as well in removing heavy metals from your body. Uh, via IV, the intravenous route, but it's something called EDTA. Look it up, EDTA. Now, you have to be careful with this supplement. You can buy it over the counter, and the reason you have to be careful is because it absorbs metals out of your body, but it also absorbs electrolytes, which are also, you know, ionically charged, and these electrolytes being calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and when you absorb those out of your body and you don't replenish them, well, then you start having problems, you're, you're not feeling good, your muscles are cramping up, your, your heart's racing, you know, all these different things. So EDTA, Echo Delta Theta Alpha, okay? So check that out. Um, let's see here. I mean, guys, plastics are really the biggest part of what it is. I mean, these are, we're talking microplastics, we're talking plastics, like Tupperwares, all this kind of stuff. If you're heating your food in a Tupperware, you need to stop right now. Don't heat that food in the, in the Tupperware. Put it in a ceramic plate, put it in a glass plate, put it in something that is not plastic and heat your food, okay? Because what happens, you heat that food and that goes right into the food and then you eat it, okay? Xenoestrogens, get away from it. Okay, um, let me just see what else we got here. Cleaning products, guys, cleaning products, even perfumes and colognes. Now, I wear perfu I wear cologne, okay? I wear different kinds of colognes. And look, guys, you know, I like to smell good. I don't really care if it's reducing my testosterone levels because I'm doing everything else 
to increase my testosterone levels. So you kind of have to pick and choose. Again, with any of this stuff, you know, you can't live in a bubble and with the food especially, you know, there are things that you really want to enjoy, but life is about balance and you have to know what that is and you have to know what is dangerous to you, okay? So I have um, one more thing here, pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers. Guys, stay the hell away from that. If you can, have somebody else do it. I mean, that kind of stuff gets into the water supply too. So my advice, if you want to help the planet, don't use it, okay? Find another way. Um, don't touch it. Glyphosate, um, let me just tell you this. Glyphosate is a pesticide that's sprayed on all of our food. And that's why the food is genetically modified. So the glyphosate doesn't kill the plant, but it kills everything else, okay? So when you get those vegetables from the store, right? Guess what? They could have glyphosate on it. And when you're consuming glyphosate, well, it decreases your testosterone, but it does a whole lot of other things in your body, bad things, very bad things. So um, that's Roundup if you're using Roundup. Um, Monsanto is the company, guys. Uh, stay away from glyphosate, okay? So I'm gonna show you a couple products here that I use to kind of help you alleviate the chemical uh, estrogen problem. Okay, first of all, guys, I don't use uh, fabric softeners, okay? I use a, uh, now this here, you can see it says free of perfumes and dyes, okay? Now, there are other kinds of detergent out there, and a lot of times you'll find that they say hypoallergenic, okay? Um, so look for that. Look for the ones that don't have phthalates or perfumes or dyes. Granted, it is in a plastic bottle, but it is at room temperature. So, you know, it's better than the alternative, having the all the fragrances and everything in the detergent, okay? I'm going to make myself smell good. I'm going to put my perfume, my cologne, whatever, on and... The detergent, whatever, it's just meant to clean my clothes, okay? And you can also use uh, borax. That is a detergent add additive. You boost your detergent power by using borax. Um, let's talk about, let's talk about body wash, okay? Body wash, fragrance-free, gentle, hypoallergenic, okay? Guys, any, any of these products that I'm showing you today, I'm not affiliated with any of them, but I'm sharing them with you so that you know what I know to help you to keep your testosterone levels up, okay? So again, fragrance-free, hypoallergenic. Now, what about, what about deodorant, okay? Now, this is something I get on Amazon, okay? It's a really good deodorant, actually. Uh, each and every coconut lime, okay? And, and look here, I don't know if you can see this, but it says no aluminum, no parabens, no artificial fragrance, no baking soda. Uh, I don't know why they say no baking soda, but uh, it's plant-based. And this is specifically made to keep you safe, right? Aluminum is another hormone disruptor. Like I said, metallic, those heavy metals, right? And then we're gonna look at this toothpaste right here, okay? This toothpaste, it doesn't have fluoride in it, okay? Fluoride, heavy metals, right? Uh, it has uh, hydroxyapatate, which has uh, been known to rebuild teeth, so very good. And it uses xylitol, not sugar, um, and some other things. But, um, uh, oh, here, look. It says, no sodium lauryl sulfate. You'll find that in a lot of shampoos, uh, parabens, or harsh abrasives. So go the natural route. And if, hey, you know what? I got to say, this stuff is actually kind of expensive, okay? I pay a little bit more because I'm trying to help rebuild my teeth too. But if you don't need that, what you can do too is you can take baking soda, Okay, and you mix it with a little hydrogen peroxide and then you go through your teeth, okay? Now you're not gonna get a minty fresh, right? You're not gonna get the minty fresh with, with this. Um, it is gonna keep your teeth clean, but you know, you wanna floss. And I would say if you get a mouthwash that doesn't have the mint in it, right? Because we know that mint decreases testosterone, um, then you should have the freshest mouth, okay? Just by using these. All right, let's move on to supplements, okay, guys? I know there's a lot of supplements out there that increase testosterone levels, but today I'm gonna only go over the ones that may be missing from your diet, maybe you're lacking it in one way or another, and these are ones that I take, and I'm gonna show you uh, what I mean. So, all right, the first supplement that we're gonna talk about is vitamin D. Vitamin D, vitamin D3, okay? So, vitamin D. It is a supplement that 
everybody should be getting. You get it from the sun. But guess what, guys? If you live in Florida, like me, it is hot as hell outside most of the time. So I don't know if you know this, but uh, darker people need more vitamin D than lighter people. Interesting, right? I guess the whiter people uh, evolved to not need it so much because they live in the cloudy northern climates, okay? But vitamin D, uh, you if you don't have vitamin D, you need vitamin D. You absolutely need vitamin D if you want to make more testosterone or at least get your testosterone up to the uh, normal levels. And um, you need at least 4,000 IUs per day, okay? Now, let's talk about another mineral, zinc, okay? I take ZMA, and I'm gonna go get into magnesium next, right? Zinc and magnesium together in one supplement, right? They do a host of great things. Zinc is known for increasing testosterone and as an aphrodisiac. Magnesium is for helping sleep and for uh, helping you go number two, all right? But uh, zinc is also good for fighting off bacteria and viruses, uh, repairing wounds, um, increasing testosterone, guys. So you need to have zinc in your diet. Let's go to magnesium real quick. Yes, magnesium. In a landmark study examining the role of magnesium in total testosterone production, researchers observed the impact of strength development during a seven-week double-blind study. Uh, in it, 12 men received magnesium supplementation while 14 others received placebos and served as controls. Um, let's get down to the results. So the results indicated significant increase in testosterone for the group taking magnesium supplementation compared to the control group, all right? So magnesium is a must. And besides, most people are magnesium deficient in the United States. I think the number is like 90% are magnesium deficient. The last one that I'm talking about is garlic, okay? I eat garlic every day. I eat garlic on everything. I have Mrs. Dash garlic and herb seasoning. It has no salt in it, and I can put as much salt as I want. But I eat garlic every day. And, you know, it's actually, I, I kind of just came across this today. It's actually good for um, atherosclerosis. Well, it prevents the hardening of arteries, high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer prevention, and weak immune system, guys. So if you like garlic, if you like onions, onions would be in the same class, actually. I think I saw... Um, Andrew Tate uh, eat onions daily. So it's not something that I would do, but um, hey, it boosts testosterone, okay? Uh, all right, let's talk about sleep, guys. If you're not getting sleep, your testosterone levels might be in trouble. And uh, well, guys, let's just keep it short. You need eight hours of sleep, okay? There's studies out there, you can look it up. Um, you know you just feel better when you get sleep, okay? Get some sleep, whatever it takes, get some sleep. All right, this one is very important. Uh, you need to lose body fat, okay? Let me just read this to you so you know. Um, one study found that men with a healthy weight versus men with an obese weight were more than eight times as likely to have low testosterone. I'm sorry, let me see. Obese men were eight times as likely to have low testosterone, okay? And let me just tell you why that is. Ah, uh, yes. Abdominal fat is known to produce an especially large amount of aromatase. So aromatase is an enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen. So, you know, guys, body fat has a mind of its own. It produces its own hormones, which makes it grow even more. Um, so obesity can throw a, whole, uh, throw a wrench in the whole process. Um, you know, it makes more estrogen and uh, more estrogen decreases testosterone. So it is a vicious, it is a vicious cycle, guys. So. You need to lose body fat, okay? It's not for, you know, appearances, guys. It's for your health, it's for your energy, it's for your vitality. You know, if you wanna be there uh, for your kids or your grandkids, you need to lose the body fat, okay? Do it, do it. It's an addiction, okay? I understand it, it is an addiction. I've been there. Just do it, all right? All right, guys, we've reached the end and I'm gonna give you my final testosterone boosting tip and it is a myth but there is some credence to it and a lot of guys um, subscribe to it. But guess what? 
I'm talking about icing your balls, right? Okay, ice those balls. 10 minutes a day, maybe 10 minutes twice a day, but I have legitimate uh, tests. I don't have them to show you because they are with a different lab and I did not get those results. But my testosterone levels were over 900. I was not using anything else. I was taking, well, I was taking uh, vitamin D, you know, garlic, ZMA, but I was icing my testicles. And before that, my testosterone was not that high, okay? So not only that, but my sperm count was in the 95th percentile. Now, take this as anecdotal evidence, guys. Give it a try for yourself. Give it a try for yourself. Ice your testicles. It's free. It feels good. And go get yourself tested and see how your levels come out after, okay? Check your sperm, check your testosterone, and see how they come out. All right, guys, we've reached the end. I've given you a whole lot of information. Go through this video and check off each check mark from all of these different things, okay? And by the end of doing this for a couple months, I want you then to come back and tell me, hey, my testosterone levels, they did improve. I do feel better. Uh, you know, I, I think I found out what's wrong with me, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I know a lot of guys are quick to buy a testosterone booster and all this kind of stuff, but guys, what's the point of a testosterone booster if you have something in your body that is constantly bringing your testosterone levels down, okay? It's once you get off the testosterone booster, boom, it's gonna drop right back down, all right? So go through and find these uh, different things in your lifestyle and change them and see what happens to you, all right? Guys, thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next video.